Chapter Seven of the Gold Sickle. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Gold Sickle by Eugene Sue, translated by Daniel De Leon. War, war, war. A furious barking of dogs in the yard and a distinct noise of hard rapping at the gate of the palisade interrupted the stranger's narrative still laboring under the painful impression of the traveller's words the family of the Bren for a moment imagined their homestead was being attacked the women rose precipitately the little ones rushed to their mother's arms the men ran for their arms that hung from the walls but the dogs soon ceased barking although the rapping at the gate continued unabated joel said to his family although they are still rapping the dogs do not bark they must know who is at the gate saying this the bren stepped out several of his kinsmen the stranger included followed him out of prudence the yard gate was opened and two voices were heard outside the palisades crying it is we friends albanik and michael indeed the two sons of the bren were distinguished by the light of the torches and behind them their horses panting for breath and white with foam after tenderly embracing his sons especially the mariner who was absent over a year on his sea journeys joel entered the house with them where they were received with joy and not a little surprised by their mother and other relatives albanik the mariner and michael the armorer were like their father and their brother men of large and robust stature over their clothes they carried a caped cloak of heavy woolen fabric streaming with the rain upon entering the house and even before embracing their mother the new arrivals stepped to the altar and approached their lips to the seven small twigs of mistletoe that stood dipped in the copper bowl on the large stone they there noticed a lifeless body covered with oak branches near which julian still sat good evening julian said michael who is dead it is armel i killed him this evening in a sword contest answered julian but as we have both pledged brotherhood to each other i shall join him to-morrow beyond if you wish it i shall mention you to him yes yes julian i loved armel and expected to find him alive in the bag on my horse i have a little harpoon head of iron that i forged for him i shall place it to-morrow on the pyre of you too and you must tell armel added the mariner smiling that he went away too soon his friends albinic and moreau would have told him their last experience at sea it is armel and myself replied julian with a smile who will later have pretty stories to tell you your sea trips will be like nothing to the travels that await us in those marvelous worlds that none has seen and all will see after margaret's two sons had answered the tender inquiries of their mother and family the bren said to the unknown traveller friend these are my two sons may it please heaven that the suddenness of their arrival may not be caused by some evil event answered the traveller i say so too my children rejoined joel what has happened that you come at so late an hour and in such hurry happy be your return albanic but i did not expect it so soon but where is the gentle moreau i left her at vans father this is what has happened i returned from spain by the gulf of gascony on the way to england the bad weather forced us to put in at vans but by two tates who presides over all journeys by land and sea here on earth and beyond i did not expect no i did not expect to see what i saw in that town i therefore left my vessel in port in charge of my sailors with my wife as their chief I took a horse and galloped to Ore, and there I gave the news to Michael, and we hastened hither to forewarn you, father. And what is it you saw at Vans? What did I see? All the inhabitants in revolt, full of indignation and rage, like the brave Bretons that they are. And what is the reason of it all, children? asked Ma'am Margaret, without leaving her distaff. Four Roman officers, without any other escort than four soldiers, and as calmly insolent as if they were in some enslaved country, came in yesterday and commanded the magistrates of the town to issue orders to all the neighboring tribes to send to Vans ten thousand bags of wheat. And what else? asked Joel, laughing and shrugging his shoulders. Five thousand bags of oats. And what else? 
five hundred barrels of hydromel of course said the brand laughing louder they must also drink and what else a thousand heads of beef and of course the fattest what else five thousand sheep that's right one soon gets tired of beef only is that all my boy they also demanded three hundred horses to furnish new equipages to the roman cavalry besides two hundred wagons of forage and why not the poor horses must be fed continued joel sneeringly but there must be some more orders if they begin to issue orders why stop at all the provisions were to be taken in wagons as far as poitou and touraine and what is the wide maw that is to swallow up those bags of wheat those mutton those heads of beef and those barrels of hydromel above all added the traveller who is to pay for all those provisions pay for them replied albinik why nobody it is a forced impost ha ha laughed joel and the wide maw that is to gulp up the provisions is none other than the roman army which is wintering in touraine and anjou a shudder of rage mixed with disdain ran through the family of the Bren. well joel the unknown traveller remarked do you still think that it is a long way from touraine to brittany the distance does not seem to me long seeing that the officers of caesar come calmly and without escort empty pursed and swinging high their canes to provision their army here joel no longer laughed he dropped his head and remained silent our guest is right put in albinic these romans came empty pursed and swinging high their canes one of them even raised his cane over old ronan the oldest magistrate of vans who like you father objected strongly to the roman exaction and yet children what else can we do but laugh at these demands to levy these provisionings upon us and the neighboring tribes of vans to force us to carry the requisitions to touraine and anjou with our oxen and horses which the romans will surely keep also and all that at the very season of the late sowing and of our autumn labors to ruin next year's harvest why that is to reduce us to living upon the grass that would have fed the cattle that they rob us of yes said michael the armorer they want to take away our wheat and our cattle and leave the grass to us by the iron of the lance that i was forging this very morning it shall be the romans who under our blows will bite the grass on our fields vans is now preparing to defend herself if attacked added the mariner they've begun to throw up trenches in the neighborhood of the port all our sailors are to be armed and if the roman galleys attack us by sea never will the sea crows have had a like feast of corpses upon our beach while crossing tonight the other tribes resumed michael we spread the news and sounded the alarm the magistrates of vans have also sent out messengers in all directions ordering that fires be lighted from hill to hill and thereby give immediate notice of the imminent danger from one end of brittany to the other without once dropping her distaff ma'am margaret had listened to the report given by her sons when they stopped speaking she calmly said as to those roman officers my sons were they not sent back to their army after a thorough canning no mother they were lodged in jail at vans all except two of their soldiers whom the magistrates charged to declare to the roman general that no provisions whatever were to be furnished him and that his officers were to be as hostages it would have been better to give the officers a thorough canning and drive them in disgrace out of the town replied ma'am margaret that is the way thieves are treated and these romans try to rob us you are right margaret said joel they came to rob us to starve us to carry away our harvests and our cattle and joel now in a towering rage added by the vengeance of hesus to think of their taking our fine turnout of six young oxen with skins slick as wolves our four yokes of black bulls that have such a beautiful white star in the center of their foreheads and our beautiful white heifers with yellow heads said ma'am margaret shrugging her shoulders and never quitting her distaff our sheep whose fleece is so nice and thick come a good canning for these romans and the powerful horses of the stock of your magnificent stallion tom bras put in the traveller they will after all have to draw your harvest to touraine and will then serve to replace the worn-out horses of the roman cavalry true to them the labor will not be excessive because you will now probably discover that it is not far from touraine to brittany 
well may you mock friend said joel you were right and i confess myself to have been wrong oh if only the provinces of gaul had from the start confederated themselves against the first assault of the romans if united they had put forth but one half the effort that they put forth separately we would not now be exposed to the insolent demands and to the threats of these heathens well may you mock no joel i will mock no longer gravely answered the traveller the danger is near the hostile camp lies only a twelve days march from here the refusal of the magistrates of vans and the imprisonment of the roman officers all that means speedy war a merciless war as only the romans know how to wage if we are vanquished it means to us death on the battlefield or slavery far away the slave merchants follow the tracks of the roman army they are greedy after prey whatever survives whether whole or wounded men young women girls children all are sold at auction like cattle for the benefit of the vanquisher and are forthwith consigned by the thousands to italy or to southern gaul where the romans are settled arrived at their destination the male slaves of robust frame are often forced to fight ferocious animals in the circus for the amusement of their masters the young women and girls even the children are subjected to monstrous debaucheries such is war with the romans if vanquished cried the stranger will you allow yourselves to be vanquished will you submit to such disgrace will you deliver to them your wives your sisters your daughters and children ye gauls of brittany hardly had the traveller uttered these words when the whole family of joel men women young girls children all down to the dwarfy stumpy rose to their feet and with their eyes shooting fire their cheeks inflamed cried tumultuously waving their arms war 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 joel's large battle mastiff fired by these cries rose on his hind legs and laid his forepaws on the breast of his master who while caressing his enormous head said yes old debertrud like our tribe you will hunt the romans the quarry shall be for you your jaws shall be red with blood wow wow debertrud at the romans at the romans hearing the well-known war cry the mastiff responded with furious barks displaying fangs as redoubtable as a lion's hearing debertrud the outside watchdogs as well as those locked up in the kennels answered him frightful was the war cry raised by the pack a good omen friend joel observed the traveller your dogs bark death to the enemy yes yes death to the enemy cried the bren thanks be to the gods in our breton gaul on the day of peril the watchdog becomes a war dog the draw horse becomes a war horse the ox of the field a war ox the harvest carts chariots of war the labourer a warrior even our peaceful and fruitful earth turns to war and devours the stranger at every step he finds a grave in our fathomless marshes and his vessels vanish in the whirlpools of our bays which are more terrible in their calm than in the tempest of their fury joel now said julian who had left the body of his friend i promised armel to meet him to-morrow yonder such a death would be pleasant to me to die fighting the romans is a duty what shall i do ask to-morrow one of the druids of karnak and our sister hena said albanac the mariner to his mother it is nearly a year i have not seen her she is surely still the pearl of the isle of sen my wife moreau charged me to remember her to hena you will see her to-morrow answered ma'am margaret and laying down her distaff she arose it was the signal for the family to retire ma'am margaret looked around and said let us retire my children it is late to-morrow at break of day we must begin our war preparations and turning to the traveller may the gods grant you a good rest and pleasant dreams end of chapter seven